Hey there fellow YouTubers. <clears throat> well, I was in the middle of a, a comparison test between just a collapsing magnetic field right here. And I had it connected here and I was measuring and comparing between just the magnetic field collapsing from the motor coil and then between that and just the generated power alone. Uh, without any kind of coil so coil sorting or anything like that. And I was in the middle of doing that and my read switch uh, quit working. Uh, <laughs> it welded shut or something. I can't get it to uh, work anymore. I, I, I don't know. I, I think when I have the collapsing magnetic field off of it, uh, there's nowhere for it to go. So, of course, it's going to go back into the switch to destroy it. But I have a diode on it. I, I have a diode across the switch. And uh, I guess uh, that's not working right. I, I don't know. I'm, that never made any sense to me anyways, to put a diode across the switch. Because when the magnetic field collapses, yes, the diode's going to block it. But then where else is it going to go? It's, it's going to go back to the switch because the diode's blocking it. So the switch is going to get destroyed even with the diode sitting there next to the switch or your transistor or whatever. So I just see no point in that. Maybe I should have put the diode right across the coil. So, you know, when it's pulsed and then when it collapses, the diode can, like, uh, I guess let it recirculate through the coil many times uh, so I, I blew my read switch so I thought I, I would put together this little video explaining uh, in the meantime wh while I wait for you know, I gotta order more read switches I gotta find the specs for it order it and then wait for them but in the meantime I would like to explain why we need a uh, capacitor to accept our shorted coil power. So get that to focus. It doesn't like the focus. I don't know why. Maybe right here. Anyways, I guess it's as good as it's going to auto focus. It's this little Nikon camera, autofocus, whatever, not enough light or something, but the, uh, the capacitor, you need the capacitor to accept your shorting power, uh, the vibrating energy inside of here, which is a high frequency AC ringing type of energy, which I've already explained in a previous video, and you can't really charge or run another load from that energy because the resistance is too high. For instance, if you wanted to take your output generated power and say you wanted to attempt to loop it back straight to the battery and say you got a meter like in between trying to read the current coming out of your uh, generated power uh, be like right here on the DC side straight back in your battery you'll find that there is no current or it's just the normal current that it's normally generating. <coughs> Excuse me. So, uh, <coughs> it, it, it won't charge, you know, a battery. And it won't run any other kind of normal load. Like a uh, light bulb, maybe. I mean, a light bulb, yes, will light up brighter. But um, you'll get like a major dragging down of the rotor. <clears throat> which is what we don't want. Um, so that's why, you, you know, the capacitor provides a reservoir for the energy to ring into. And so if you were to try to measure it with a common load resistor test, where you try to measure voltage and current, the fine wattage, you'll see that it won't be a lot. And the only thing that can really accept uh, this ringing energy, uh, high frequency vibration uh, in here when we short it, <coughs> will only 
go into a capacitor. A capacitor will accept this very well. It gladly accepts it. But a battery won't. Or any other kind of common load with a lot of resistance. Because what it does is the resistance of the load. Uh, it, it snuffs out this energy and it kills the effect. This will accept that effect. And charge up with more power than what it generates normally which we've already shown in a previous video uh, try to go back and look for them because I've already explained that um, so that that's why you need a capacitor to accept our extra energy on top of what it's already being generated now when a capacitor is empty at zero volts fully discharged <coughs> It basically acts like a complete short circuit, um, meaning that the most amount of current will flow into it. It's acting as the biggest possible load for that split second that it's empty. The very moment it begins to charge up, then it's no longer a short circuit, and uh, the resistance of it basically goes up, and the, the current flowing into it, comes lower and lower and lower until the capacitor gets fuller and fuller and fuller until it's just blocking all the current and so uh, anyways uh, that's that's what's doing with the uh, capacitor that needs to be there <coughs> to accept the energy um, so it's like when this is on zero completely discharged it's acting like a, a dead short circuit for that split second of time that it's on zero the very moment it goes up from zero and begins to charge then uh, it's no longer a, a zero resistant situation and uh, the current flowing into it becomes less and less so uh, I just wanted to explain that a little bit better that you, you can't read the energy coming from the vibrating energy in here and I think Maybe this is probably what Tesla was uh, observing in his coils and his so-called radiant energy that you cannot measure. This is the energy you can't measure. This is the vibrational high frequency ringing going on in here. You can't see it going into a load. Uh, maybe you'll see it a little bit going into a capacitor, but... That's hard to do because things are changing so fast and charging and discharging a capacitor. So, uh, that's all I really wanted to explain on that. And uh, if you're new to the channel, please subscribe. And thanks for watching. And uh, I'll see you on the next video when I get my new read switches in. And then we can do that uh, generated uh, and collapsing magnetic field test comparison. Okay, peace.